Hey YouTube, quick video about my ingenious plan to bypass all the crap my ISP makes me use. Well, full disclo disclosure, I don't actually have to use the all-in-one router they provide, um, but your average customer does. Let's talk about my setup right now. I've got my fiber ONT plugged into my PFSense box. Most consumers would have their ONT plugged into the WAN port on the all-in-one router modem they provide. Um, the funny thing about this one in particular is it's also a VDSL modem if you subscribe to the VDSL service. So this is all fine and dandy. My PFSense gets a uh, public IP. All great. It's been like this for years. But recently I found out new installs do not get the ONT, and in fact, they go directly into this, into the SFP port. So obviously, I thought, well, if I put a PCIe card in the PFSense box, can I just unplug it from there and plug into there, and will it work? Well, that's the point of this video. We're going to find out. So step one is to convince the ISP to come out and upgrade my setup to the new way of doing it. So obviously we go on the web chat and we go through all the steps and get ourselves a tech booked. Now we just gotta wait for them to come out and determine if my setup is compatible with SFP. All right, update. One week later, they actually came out and they did it. They didn't even charge me. So they took away the ONT and basically wired me directly in here uh, through SFP into the all-in-one router, which we talked about a few minutes ago. Um, obviously, uh, me being eager to test this out, the very first thing I did as soon as I left was pull the SFP module out of here and plug it in to a switch. So as you can see, the switch is hooked up, so I'm sure you can assume, um, and you assume correctly, it does work. So basically, the um, SFP dongle is plugged in, and I've got the PFSense router plugged in via Ethernet, and it picked up a public IP. So. The theory is now that we've tested this, that this will actually work the way I want it to. So I went on eBay and I ordered myself a used uh, dual 10 gig uh, ethernet card. Um, so it's got two 10 gig SFP ports on there. I did look it up to make sure this is compatible with PFSense and it should be. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and install this and uh, see if this actually works the way I want it to. So you may notice there's no riser card in here. So we're going to try to use a ribbon cable uh, extension, although now that I'm looking at this I have questions of whether or not this is going to work. But we're going to try anyways. Um, unfortunately I, I wasn't able to find a, um, or efficiently find a uh, PCIe riser card, otherwise I would have ordered one. This came in two days on Amazon Prime and cost eight bucks, so that's going to be my first attempt. So this is the card here, and it's going to basically install just like so. Uh, let's see if we can get this to actually go where it wants supposed to. Okay, it looks like this. Oh, there we go. It was a bit of a tight fit. Um, I've got a bit of concern about heat, but we're just going to going to install it like this for now. And if I have to add another fan or something in there, we will. Okay, so that's clipped in. Um, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to use. I well, we can't use that, so I'm going to use this port, and this is where it's going to be a little bit silly, because this is going to have to basically loop over like that, and then this is going to have to be, this is my concern here, because I don't really want to pinch this, but in order for me to get the lid on, this is going to have to be, um, uh-oh, I guess I should have unplugged it, because the whole system just turned on for some reason. I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it now. <laughs> um, we're just going to go like this and see what happens. Okay, so we're into the PFSense in, uh, interface, so it booted no problem. We're just going to go ahead and go to WAN and see what we see here. Obviously not the right place to go. So let's go assignments. Okay. So we're seeing a few new interfaces, BX0 and BXE1. So let's go ahead and select WAN as BXE0, hit save, and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and plug in this module. 
Um, I don't know which is which. Uh, oh, port one and port two, perfect. So let's go like so. So we are now plugged into port one. I don't see any lights on yet. Um, and let's take our fiber, which is right here. And plug that sucker in. Uh-oh, something fell. I hope I didn't break something important. Okay, so she's locked in. Um, still not seeing any port activity lights. So I heard that these can take up to five minutes to actually connect. Having said that, I assumed we would have had an activity light of some sort, but we're just going to give it some time just in case. Tragedy. It did not work. Uh, PFSense detected and installed the card, no problem. And um, I stuck in one of these other uh, SFP modules I have and did a test with my switch and I was able to get it working. Uh, however, the, um, the SFP GPON module just would not, simply not work. So I've got a slight theory, and it's very much a theory, is um, I don't know if this card was able, able to produce enough power to actually run the module. And the reason I say that is because there's four status lights here on the card itself. Um, sorry, the video is probably awful, but they're lined up one, two, three, four. And uh, when you power up the card, two of the lights come on right away. And as soon as you insert a module, put it in the right way, click, uh, the light would turn off. So in the case of the, the GPON module, the light would just start blinking erratically. So it would be like blink or blink, blink, blink. Almost as if it was trying to power up and it almost got there and then no, not enough power. So I don't know. That's a wild theory. The The fact is, is I, I've never seen, well, usually when there's an error code or something, something like that, you get a a, a flash um, sequence that makes sense, not just random. So that makes me think it was a hardware related issue. So don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I went on the internet and I actually found someone uh, had posted on uh, DSL reports that they have used this exact card. Well, I don't know if it's this exact variation, but this chipset successfully. And this is, let's see, I. Uh, this is a Chelsea T420, as the bag says. Um, another nice thing about this card in particular is it has a fan. So that should really help with the cooling because that card got hot and I wasn't even really using it. All right, so let's now repeat what we just did and install this one and see if we get better results. Um, hopefully this works because this is not what I would recommend shipping a card in, but we'll see. Okay, plug in fiber from the pole outside. And we'll give it a few minutes and see what happens. So usually when I power up my switch, it does take a good 60-ish seconds for this to actually show that a link has been established. So I'm hoping that maybe that's the same case here. Holy beep. It actually worked. So we've got a public IP showing up on PFSense and we've got a link to the ISP. Wow. I, I gotta be honest, I did not actually think that this would work. Well, let's just see, uh, let's just do a speed test and, and see if we're getting full speeds out of this. Okay, here we are on speedtest.net. So you may notice we are literally using a server that belongs to our ISP, which is almost necessary because I find a lot of times um, servers aren't able to take the, uh, the bandwidth my connection will pull. So 
Here goes nothing. I'm curious if my ping time is worse or better than usual. Usually it sits around three milliseconds. Okay, well, I'm gonna say that's not necessarily worse or better. Okay, about 700 megabits per second download. That is not great. But we'll see where the upload hits. And if we are getting better upload performance, then we need to try a different server. Yeah, that's not what I call better. Okay, just to make sure we're not having issues with computer resources, we're going old school and I'm just going to record the screen. So currently, right now, nothing's open on the computer except for the browser and, well, that's about it, and a few background apps. So this part here, okay, we got, we're showing a better ping, oh, wow, okay. I have a feeling this was computer related then, not actual router related. All right, we did it. We took fiber to the home and plugged it directly into PFSense. That's actually pretty sweet. If you have fiber to the home and your connection is similar to mine and they give you an all-in-one router of some sort with uh, an SFP module plugged in, you might be able to do the same thing, presuming you have a card that is compatible. Um, in my case, this is a no uh, what's called a Nokia SFP-ONT is what uh, is actually on the module itself. And um, it obviously did not work with my Broadcom card. I'll uh, just paste the model. Oh, it's right here, 530 SFP Plus. So this is a dual 10 gigabit, uh, it's an HP card. Um, did not work, but then we put the Chelsea which I'm very sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Please correct me if I am. The T420 uh, worked without a problem. It just plugged in and PFSense installed it right away. No driver hassle and uh, it disconnected. So. This, uh, I would say, is a success. I hope my ISP does not watch because this probably violates my terms of service. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll try to keep posting things that are interesting. All right, thanks for watching.